Let's talk about unit tests and why I don't use them. I know that's a bold statement, <laughs> but I don't have much a use case for unit tests in the vast, vast majority of the things that I built. And I think that when I say that, my take gets seen as some crazy rebellious person who only works on small teams and is more than happy to go break things for all five of my users. But this is actually the same take that, funny enough, some other big companies have. One of my favorites, and I need to go find the tweet quick. Quote tweeted it because it was really good. Aha. Here, wanted to go find this tweet because as I said, it's a banger. Somebody went on a rant about like eng culture coming from one company to another. And a Facebook engineer had a test that was preventing a change from happening. So he deleted the test and got back to work because tests are only there to block engineers. That is the only role of tests. And in this engineer's five years at Facebook, they have never written a single test. It was cheaper to test and prod and forward fix. What you need to know is that it wasn't a zero to 100% of infra in one day. It was tiered, monitored with an SRE uh, team watching as things go out. Unit tests are designed to slow you down. That is not necessarily a bad thing. There are a lot of places where slowing your engineers down to make sure everything is always the exact way you expect can make sense. Like if you're doing like financial bank software to make sure transactions are being processed correctly on the back end, those types of things should probably have unit tests as well as a shitload of integration end to end tests. That all said, if you're building applications for users, the application breaking slightly and then being fixed when you've identified that break is almost always cheaper. And if it's not cheaper, that's the thing you should be focused on fixing. I've helped a lot of teams, companies, individual engineers find ways to be more productive without being more destructive, to be frank. And the best ways don't tend to be testing at all. And if they are, they're integration and end testing. Unit testing is a way to set up a guardrail at every possible turn when developers are the ones whose job is to make the path. You cannot predict every path somebody might go down. So your unit tests are going to block important paths inherently just by existing. I don't think senior developers, engineer leads, team leads, all of the people who make these technical decisions, certainly not like CTOs and such, should be enforcing code coverage numbers for unit tests because that is enforcing people to build guardrails instead of building paths. And if a path isn't put in the right place and somebody missteps and falls, you should be focused on building a good safety net. And I think that's the core of my testing philosophy don't build guardrails, build safety nets. Make it as cheap as possible to fail. So if something does go wrong in prod, you can revert it really quickly and fix it even quicker. Our time to respond to a bug at ping, like when somebody reports an issue to us, our average response time is a decent bit under seven minutes for a production fix because we have optimized the hell out of our pipe. So once an issue is reported to us, we can identify it fast and fix it even faster. That is so much more important than any number of unit tests can be. And it doesn't cost our engineers more. In fact, the things that we did to make it that fast help our engineers every day on anything that they're working on. The value of not unit testing is that the time you would spend unit testing can be spent doing all of the other things our teams, our users, and our engineers want and need. And by making our environment as fast as possible, it is now safer to make mistakes, but more importantly, our engineers are less scared. They don't worry about writing the right number of tests or when a test is failing for some reason, they don't worry about like deleting it and finding the right conditions. Tests are poorly placed guardrails. Please build safety nets instead. It isn't, it, it's, I've seen so many code bases by like a 10 person team that take 20 minutes to deploy and have 80 to 90 to 100% even code coverage. And that does not make a productive work environment. I've seen four person teams hiring DevOps because they have dug themselves into such deep holes instead of keeping things simple. And unit tests are one of those things where if they're not solving a specific problem for you, you probably shouldn't be writing them at all. 
So I hope that helps people better understand my stance on unit testing and why I don't really bother doing it. I have been we've been keeping track at Ping actually. We have a list of the bugs that hit production that a unit test theoretically could have caught. And in our year of operation, we're at three. And of those three, two of them, absolutely we never would have written the test for. They were very strange edge cases that were like, maybe an integration test might have caught, but like theoretically, we could have written a unit test that caught those things. But the reality is the problems we run into are not ones that unit tests realistically would have been testing for. On top of that, a lot of the problems I used to have that unit tests helped for were things that TypeScript has solved. So for the 80% window of tests making sure valid inputs and outputs are happening, TypeScript does that. And for the other 20%, I feel like you're going to run into those bugs anyways. So making it easy to fix them when you do is way higher a priority for me, almost always. But Theo, we have this one path in our code base that's super fragile and it keeps breaking. So we have lots of unit tests making sure it doesn't break. Cool, I guess. Like if nobody ever wants to touch that and you've put those unit tests in to kind of like cement it in, in stone so that no one will ever touch it again. Great. You did your job. You took this thing that barely works and you t duct taped and cemented it in place so it can't ever move. So it's less likely to break. But I would have spent that time rebuilding the thing, not covering it in cement so it can't ever move again. Like if something is fragile, the time spent reinforcing it with unit tests to double or more the amount of code just to make sure that thing doesn't break again. It's time you could almost always have spent rewriting the thing so it's less fragile in the first place. So with all that said, I hope you understand why in the hierarchy of things I could be doing as an engineer, as a team lead, and as a CEO at any given time, unit tests don't even make the list. It does not bring value to our engineers does not bring value to our users, and it certainly does not bring value to our company. And you have to be in a very specific company's role for those things to matter a lot. So if you have one of those dumb 100% code coverage rules at work, and some senior engineer from X Amazon or some shit that insists y'all need 100% code coverage, everything's going to go to hell, send them this video. Seriously. I would love to chat. Code coverage was a mistake and unit tests solve specific problems that you probably do not have. Build safety nets, not guardrails. I hope this was helpful. Hey, did you know that over half my viewers haven't subscribed yet? That's insane. Y'all just click these videos and listen to me shout and hope that the algorithm is going to show you the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, maybe even the bell next to it so that you know when I'm posting videos. Also, if you didn't know this, Almost all of my content is live streamed on Twitch while I'm making it. Everything on the YouTube is cuts, clips, whatever from my Twitch show. So if you're not already watching, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Theo, where I'm live every Wednesday around 2 or 3 p.m. And I go live on Fridays pretty often as well. Thank you again for watching this video. Really excited. Thank you.